Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to render dynamic components with the data loaded from a database. We have two scenarios. So scenario number one, we have a single component, child component. We're going to inject data from an array and render this child component multiple times. And the data may come from a database. The second scenario is much more complex. We have a collection of child components and each expects some different data structure. Like component one expects string, component two expects number. And then these data are also saved in an array in a database. Obviously, I'm talking about MongoDB because in SQL, the table is very rigid. You have to have the same structure. In MongoDB, each document can have distinct data structure, different values, different structure, yeah. So you save those metadata into a MongoDB database and each component expects its unique data. Once the data is element is flipped, you're going to get error because uh, the component will be getting the wrong data. So this is much more complex. How do you accomplish these things? It's actually fairly easy in Angular. The first example, uh, you can see I rendered the same charm component three times with the three data elements from an array. The student number is just the ID field, a school grade name ranking, school grade name ranking about a math competition. Yeah. When I make changes, the changes will be live. The order has changed. The student name has been changed to here, changed to Josh. Yeah. So when you make changes to that array, the changes reflect real time. So this is very easy to implement. You just render the same child component in the for loop each time inject the, the array element. So I will show you the code. Here is the example one template code. You can see at four, use the for loop for each element of the array. This track C is just a for some conf, the conf, efficiency gains, gains. Yeah, this is the for, new syntax in Angular 17, 16. And for each element, you can also track the index. Yeah, and if the row is odd, I would uh, put a different background color. So like this guy, the second item is has a different color. The fourth item will have a different color. You may ask, hey, isn't this odd? Will be applied a different style? Well, the array item starts with zero. So the row zero is even. Row row one actually is row zero. Yeah. Row one is actually even because number zero. So I use the odd because it starts at the second row, which is row one. Yeah. And I just render the child component in this for loop. And I just inject this data element into the child component. The child component has just one input, which is called competitor. So competitor is, I defined the competitor data structure elsewhere in the model file. So competitor is, has four fields, school grade name ranking. I pass, I create in my example component, parent component, uh, the array, which is imported obviously from this models file import this array into my parent component I then render the children in the for loop for each element of the child I just pass the input data to the child so it's very straightforward if you hear some noise in the background that's my uh, Siberian forest cat uh, making the noise okay so the first example is uh, just to create an array and inject uh, the array elements into the child component through its input and you iterate uh, through that array. Render the same component multiple times. It's extremely easy. The second example is more complex because we have different data structure into different components. And the data structure most likely come from MongoDB database. And how do you associate the data structure with your component, distinct components? You have three array elements, you have three components. So the second example, uh, you can see here we have a three child components, child one, child two, child three. Each has different input. This child one expects name and gender, two strings. Child two expects name and school, two strings, but it's different. It's not gender, it's school. Child three, name and age, age is a number. So they each expect something different. And there are three different components. Obviously, to associate your data with your components, you want to use the component name. The component name is just underscore plus the class name. So the component is a class, it's a factory, right? You can generate as many instances of components as you want. Like the first example, 
you iterate uh, through that array and you generate three child components, same component rendered three times, each with a distinct input data. So it's just a class. So the component name is underscore a child three component. If you import a component and console log it, you will be able to see the underscore before the component name. So that's how you associate your component name uh, with your uh, data loaded from your database. So here, I will show the example two data. Here, I imported all three components and I can assemble them into an array. Component one, component two, component three, a child component. The only reason I do that is make my example two component clean because otherwise I'd have to import a lot of stuff, assemble them. Here are just components. Uh, I tend to delegate all the non-UI related uh, thing to some other files. Yeah, that's just a habit. Yeah. Now this data is loaded from database. You need to save the component name, underscore child one component, underscore child two component, underscore child three component. And then in ng on init life cycle hook, whenever the component initiates, I would use it for each loop to iterate through these this hard-coded uh, array uh, in production this comes from a database yeah uh, for each element of this array i would grab the components which i just imported from that uh, the data for models file chart one component chart two component chart three components for each of these guy i would grab their name see if their name is equal to uh, the name of this array yeah, underscore so the name has underscore the components name has an underscore so this way i am able to attach a new element called component to each array element because i use the type any you can attach whatever property to this these array element so each guy now have a new field called component after this loop finishes so now the data structure has changed from component data is an array of component, child one component. Then we have component name and data. Component, child two component, and then we have name and data, and so on and so forth. So this way, by using the component name, uh, I associated the data loaded from a MongoDB database with the components. So the components now sits in the array. Um, so the, after the loop executes, we will have something like this. Component child three component. Yeah, each element will have a new item called component. Yeah, so that's what happens after loop execute. And of course, the data can be manipulated live. Uh, you can just write some code, write some functions, or in the user interface, you can just change some of the metadata, no problem. And the loop is very similar to example ones. So for each component data, I would just use this ng template, a slightly different. I use ng component outlet because now the component is not the same component. It's dynamic, right? It's three distinct components, child one, child two, child three. So I use the components property at the first argument and use the input as the second argument and pass the input data to the component. If you look at child one, the input data is name and school. But here in my data structure, in the example component, it's name school. The data property has name and school. Data property has name gender. Data property has name and age. Exactly matches the input of the child components. So this how I this is how I make it happen. Yeah. So it's a uh, not a difficult at all. It's basically again still a loop. You use ng component outlet, and uh, you use this uh, component name to associate the component with your metadata loaded from mongodb database so if you look at oh, this page uh, example number two you will see they are rendered uh, you can also pass other data like order you can reorder them based on order in the database you can have a toggle like a boolean variable to render or not to render and so on and so forth whatever data you can save you can save it to mongodb DB database load them using the component name to associate your component with the corresponding uh, array item and then render them in whichever way you want. Um, so that's how to render dynamic components in Angular. Thank you. Uh, by the way, feel free to check out the GitHub code, yeah.